When I fall, he's ever a healer to me. He's ever a healer to me. Covers me with his righteousness. He's ever a healer to me. He's ever a healer to me. A healer, healer he is to me. When I'm fallen, when I'm wounded and worn, Jesus takes me into his loving arms again. What a healer, healer he is to me. How often have I wandered away from safety? Have I drifted away? Himself just to rescue me. He treats me as no rebel at all. A healer, healer, he. To me, when I'm fallen, when I'm wounded and worn, Jesus takes me into his loving arms. What a healer, what a healer, what a healer, healer he is to me. I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord and our soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I want to welcome you all to our Sabbath today. It's a beautiful day. Um, God has favored us with yet another Sabbath where we can bask uh, in His presence. So, as you know that this week we are dealing with the New Start program or the Eight Doctors of Nature. So I will be looking at one of those doctors, which is the sunshine. So uh, let us take our Bibles and open in the book of Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. We are going to read verses 1 and 2. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do, do wickedly shall be stubborn. And that day comes that shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither 
root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth, go forth and grow up as calves of the star. Shall we close our eyes? Our God in heaven, I want to thank you in a very special way. We invite you to this short, short session where, Lord, we shall be sharing about your word, about your health principles. I pray, Lord, that you may infuse us with your Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we may understand the importance of adhering to the principles of nature that you have given us so that our health will be in a good condition. We don't only pray for our physical healing, we also pray for our spiritual healing. So therefore, I pray that you may bless everything that shall happen today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So as I have stated that today, we are dealing with the eight, eight laws of health, which we have given them the acronym New START. Namely, they are nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Those are the eight laws of health that God has given us. And you will find these in the book, Ministry of Healing. And uh, Ellen White uh, gave us these principles long before uh, the conventional health um, knew about them. So Ellen White was a century ahead of her contemporaries when it comes to the health message. It is only now that many governments are now incorporating these principles uh, in their health departments, but we have long known about them. So today I want to speak about the sun. I want to speak about the sun and we all know what the sun is. Okay, so the sun um, is something that we see every day. No one can claim that he does not know what the sun is unless he is blind. Now, the sun that we see here is actually 150 kilometers away from the earth. And the temperature in the sun is 15, 15 million degrees Celsius. It's very, very hot in the sun. Now, they say that if you hit a pin head to that temperature, it can burn everything to ashes within a radius of a hundred kilometers. So should the earth move slightly closer to the sun, we can all burn from the heat. And should the earth move slightly backwards um, away from the sun, we can all freeze to death. So where we are, the distance from where we are from the sun is just the correct one. Okay, so the sun is not only essential for light and warmth, but it has some healing properties. Now, I'll just mention a few. Number one, the sun alleviates pain. Number two, it lowers blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Number three, it strengthens the immune system. Number four, it kills germs and viruses. Number five, it elevates the mood. But now I will just concentrate on number four and number five, as you know that we want to see how the eight doctors will help us to deal with the problem of the pandemic of COVID-19. 
because that is the ele elephant in the room that we are dealing with. So the sun helps in the absorption of calcium in the body. Now, calcium helps in the strengthening of bones and prevents the deficiency uh, of which leads to a disease called rickets in children. So if calcium is deficient in the body, it creates a disease. So sunlight helps us in absorbing calcium into our bodies. Okay, and then the vitamin D from the sun helps to build the immune system. Okay, it helps to build the immune system. It is very, very important that now that we are facing the pandemic of, of COVID-19, that our immune system is at its optimum level. So we must make sure that we boost our immune system so that it will be able to fight this virus. Now, William Weller, who is a medical doctor and a dermatologist and a sunlight, a sunlight researcher at the University of Edinburgh in the UK, actually made a research about the benefits of the sun. He looked at COVID-19 data in the US and that there seems to be a strong correlation between states that get a lot of sun and states that have a, a lower sun uh, sunshine. Those states that have a lower sunshine, the death rate is higher. Now he says that when people are exposed to the ultraviolet light, this may cause changes inside the human body, uh, which actually strengthens the immune system. So he says that the sunlight is able to boost our immune system. The vitamin D that we get from the sun has a way of um, enhancing the immune system in our bodies. So then number three, the vitamin D in the sun kills germs and viruses. The ultraviolet rays from the sun can block COVID-19 uh, viruses from replicate, replicating and causing severe illnesses. When researchers at the National Biodefense Analysis Center exposed the SARS-CoV-19 uh, virus in simulated saliva to artificial light, which is equivalent to a sunny day, they discovered that 90% of viruses were inactivated within seven minutes. This result suggests that coronavirus is less able to survive under the sun's rays and that your risk of exposure is significantly lower in outdoor environments. So it is very, very important that we expose ourselves to the sun so that number one, we boost our immune system. Number two, we stop the viruses from replicating, including the COVID-19 virus. So even if we are on quarantine, uh, uh, you know, on quarantine, make sure that you go and sit in the sun so that you may reap the benefits uh, of sunshine. Let's say you have a very thin budget where we have to choose whether to buy vitamin C supplements, vitamin D supplements, or zinc supplements. I would say take vitamin D because it does what vitamin C does. It can boost the immune system. It also does what zinc can do. It kills the viruses. So you must never ever stay in your house without vitamin D supplements. But let us make sure that we do not overdose it. Uh, let us remain, uh, you know, uh, temperate uh, so that we do not uh, you know, injure our bodies from an overdose of vitamin D. So people, uh, people 
who are older in age and people who are obese. Um, the rate at which they, their bodies absorb the sunlight rays is lower than people who are younger. So it is important that they must take vitamin D supplements. Okay, so it is very, very important that we enjoy the benefits of sunshine. When you wake up in the morning, open the curtains, let the sun come through. So the, um, in chapter 4 of Malachi that we have read, verse 2, Malachi says, But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. What Malachi is doing here, because what I want to do, I want to connect the small sun which we have here in our uh, solar system and also the great sun, which who is Jesus, the son of righteousness, so that we see the connection between the two. Okay. Malachi speaks about the son of righteousness who will arise with healing in his wings. As I have stated that the rays of the sun have got some healing properties for the healing of the nations. The son of righteousness also shall come with healing in his wings. Now, in chapter 4, Malachi finishes off an argument which he, which he has started in chapter 3, verse 14. In verse 14, there are people who have come to the conclusion that it is, it is of no purpose to serve God. There is a deep vein of dissatisfaction here. Because they feel that God is somehow unfair. God is biased the way, with the way he treats the rich and the way he treats the poor. They are, the bone of contention here is that why is it that life seems to be easy for the rich and the ruling class and yet life is difficult for the poor? And they are saying hard things about God. They are casting aspersions on his character. And the question that they are dealing with here is an, an age-old question, which we find David grappling with it. We find Jeremiah grappling with the same question. We find Habakkuk grappling with the same question. And now in Habakkuk, they are grappling with, this, with the same question. Why is it that the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer? It seems as though God is lenient towards the wicked and he is hard towards the righteous. Life is easy for the rich, for the wicked, because they can afford the best cars. They can afford the best houses. They can afford the best holidays. When they go on, when they, when they do their shopping, they take a flight to Dubai. Things are seemingly easy for them. And yet, when it comes to the righteous, life seems to be a constant toy. They find it difficult just to make ends meet or to meet the bare necessities of life. Every day they must toil just to make it in life. At the end of the month, they struggle to pay their bills. The bills are high and the funds are low. With the righteous, the good times seem to be of a distant memory 
And the people here are now coming to the conclusion that God is not fair. Let us face it, friends. There are times in life when we feel disappointed by God. When you see other people being successful in life and doing well and you just struggle from day to day and you wonder why. Why me? Why should I struggle? And yet we serve the same God. Why should I go through life with such difficulty and yet it is so easy with other people? Why is it that my name is first? It is on top of the list um, in the Dockers list of welfare beneficiaries. So, at a time you find yourself being discouraged that, you know, it seems as if I am not benefiting anything from worshipping God. And some of my friends and relatives tell me that, where is your God when you are struggling like this? Why don't you just desert him and make life, you know, like other people are making it? There are times like that. I remember my late brother was going through challenges in life, my late brother Victor, and uh, he went to someone who was his, who was his friend to confide uh, in him his challenges. And the response of his friend was, Maranawe Victor, you are so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly use. Yo, he said to me, you know, those words were like sharp arrows in my heart. How can my friend say this to me? And uh, he could find it difficult to understand that how insensitive people can be. There are times when you think those who are closest to you are the ones who are saying sharp words and you feel discouraged. You feel like, like quitting. You feel like you know it is useless to serve God because I am just struggling, you know, more than people who do not serve God. So, what is the point? And now, Malachi begins his argument to vindicate the character of God. Because here, the character of God is under attack. And Malachi, under inspiration, begins his argument in verse uh, 15. Now, in verse 18, then he says, Then he shall return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between, between him that serves God and him that does not serve God. Verse 18 is the last verse in chapter 3. It is a transition from chapter 3 to chapter 4. So, Verse 18 is a bridge that takes us to chapter 4, verse 1. He says in, 18, in verse 18, Then he shall return and descend between the righteous and the wicked. Let us be careful here. He does not say, now you will return. No, no, no. It is not now. It is in the future. For now, it is that, you know, uh, there may be a fine line between uh, the lifestyle of the wicked and the rich, and you may get confused, you may confuse the wicked for the righteous and the righteous for the wicked. He says, not for now, but in the future you will see the difference. So, for now, just hold your horses, just wait meekly and murmur not until that time when God shall make a clear distinction, it shall be as clear as sunshine. It will be a sharp contrast as the east is from the west. You will never be confused as who are the wicked and who are the righteous. It is just a matter of time when God shall make it clear that your faith has not been in vain. So, he is pointing us into the future. 
the day when the sun of righteousness of the great sun shall come with healing in his wings. But to the wicked, Malachi says, that day shall burn as an oven or as a furnace. Psalm 50 verse 3, David says, Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous about him. So, Malachi is speaking about the great day of the Lord, which the prophet has been speaking about. He is speaking about that great day which is coming. So, that same sun will have different effects uh, upon the wicked and upon the righteous. It is the same sun, same sun but different effects. To the wicked, it will, it will come with the vengeance of God. But to the righteous, he will come as Jehovah Rapha, or Jehovah our healer, the Lord our healer. To the wicked, he will come, and that coming or that son shall be the source of their sorrow and their anguish and their torture. They will run away to the mountains. They will not be able to behold him. But to the righteous, it will be a son of righteousness. They will bask in the rays of his sunshine. To the wicked, it will be a day of destruction. But to the righteous, it will be a day of celebration and jubilation. Um, it will, um, they will shout and, uh, you know, uh, and say, uh, this is the day that we, have wait that we have waited for. Our God will come and we shall rejoice in his salvation. The wicked will run to the mountains and to the rocks and say, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So there's a distinction between these two groups. When Jesus comes, there'll be two groups on earth. Those who serve him and those who do not serve him. Those who fear him and those who do not fear him. Those who are righteous and those who are wicked. That is why verse 17 says, But to those that fear his name, he, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And he says, He shall go forth and leap like calves uh, going out of the star. So on the one extreme, it is uh, extreme anguish. On the other extreme, it is extreme joy unspeakable and full of glory. When the great sun shall come, the small sun shall withdraw its light to pay homage to the great sun because all the suns, the stars, they draw their light and their energy from the sun of righteousness. So when the original sun shall come, when the creator sun shall come, the created sun shall withdraw its light and the earth will be filled with the brightness emanating from Jesus who will be coming. So why it will be judgment for the wicked, yet for the righteous it will be for their vindication. Now, uh, most translation they use the word, he will come with healing in his wings, uh, when they refer to the sun. Now, this is an accurate translation uh, uh, that they are make, making. Now, in Hebrew, they use 
the word kanap which is k a n a p h it is often translated wings the hebrew word kanap is translated wings but there's a broader meaning to the word kanap it can also mean an extremity an edge the fringes the hell or the borders of a garment so when jesus shall come as we know that when he ascended to heaven he was in the form of humanity and when he comes he will come in the form of humanity he will not have wings his brightness shall fill the whole earth but the from the edges from the edge of his garment from the helm of his garment the rays of light will be for the healing of the nations uh, who fear god uh, the nations who are righteous the nations uh, who serve god we will not be you know do like the woman with the issue of blood who said if only i can touch the helm of his garment I know I will be healed but this time the healing will flow freely from the hem of his garment while he will be suspended in the skies he will jam the skies he will not touch this earth and the rays emanating from him shall fill the whole earth and the rays from the hem of his garment shall be a source of of healing those rays shall uh, you know heal all manner of diseases it will heal high blood pressure it will heal cancer in a moment in a twinkling of an eye we shall be changed so there is healing in the rays that come from the sun of righteousness all diseases covered they will disappear in the twinkling of an eye and then he says we shall leap with the vigor of young calves so it means that there will be extreme joy there will be extreme excitement i remember when we were still growing up you know at home uh, my mother would send myself and my brother victor to go and buy milk from a nearby homestead they had cows there and at times when we arrived there the milk would not be ready because they would still be waiting for the cows to come from grazing so that they would then start milking them so what they would normally do in the morning when the cows go for grazing they don't take the calves with them but they lock the calves in the stall until the cows come back Now when the cows come back then they open the stall then man you will see those calves going out of the stall they are not walking slowly but they are galloping as if they don't know where they are going some would gallop that way others would jump that way others would jump and go backwards the joy of seeing their mothers coming they know that breakfast time is here now we are going to to you know to, to get food that excitement malachi is using that imagery or that metaphor so that we really understand what shall happen on the day when the sun of righteousness shall come we will not remain you know stunted and slow but we shall jump we shall leap with joy unspeakable and full of glory and for now we are like calves that i that are locked in a star and people may not see the difference between those who serve god and those who do not serve god so the day when the sun of righteousness shall come we shall be let loose from our stars and we shall jump we shall leap we shall gallop as we make our way in the sky to meet our savior we shall see him face to face with no veil in between 
face to face shall I see my Redeemer. Face to face shall I behold him in all his glory. Face to face shall I see my Savior who has died for me. All my friends, let us look forward to that day when the Son of Righteousness shall come. Let us not throw our toys now and despair and become discouraged as if it doesn't serve any purpose to serve God. It is only a matter of time. Now there may be no difference, but John says, now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear who we are, but when he shall come, we shall be like him. We shall be translated in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye. So until then, friends, let us bask in the small sun and get our healing there. Let us enjoy it. Let us not lock ourselves in our houses. There are healing properties in the sun. Let's make sure that we expose ourselves to the rays of the sun and strengthen our immune systems. And that sunshine will also destroy the viruses, including the COVID-19 virus. But until then, let us look forward to that day when that great sun shall come with healing in his wings. When Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, shall come, let us look forward to that day. Let us look forward in anticipation. Let us not move our eyes from the eastern skies where he shall come. So may God bless you, friends. May God give you courage to stand. Face your difficulties with courage. Know that one day your Redeemer shall come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Our gracious God in heaven, thank you so much again for your word which is elevating, which is rejuvenating. It is encouraging us, dear Lord, that indeed it is true that at times we find ourselves discouraged and we are tempted to give up. But this morning I say, no, 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 that um, our day is coming when it shall be clear between those who serve God and those who do not serve you. Let us not jump the gun. Let us be patient with you because, Lord, your justice is slow. The wheels of your justice grind slowly, but they ground the finest. You know what you're doing. You're not confused. At the right time, you will vindicate your children. And, Lord, as you know that we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic, many people are losing their lives. And today, Lord, you are saying, let us enjoy the benefits of the sun, of the sunshine that you have given us every day. Let us enjoy its rays and its benefits. So that, Lord, as we do that, let us thank you for the sun that you have given us. It is of great help to us. So, Lord, we thank you for all the benefits of serving you. There is no God like you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.